It was, it was clear that the, the, the manager of the orphanage knew that he was effectively doing something that wasn't fully legal. But I didn't get the sense from him or frankly anyone else that they really thought they were doing anything wrong. It was just this was another form of business that they had lucked into and they were able to get money from Australia and the UK and US, whatever. And they were presumably paying money to, you know, the teachers that they had. And, you know, there was a little sort of business going on there. Um, they just didn't want to be interfered with, right? It wasn't that they felt that, oh my goodness, you know, you're uncovering some awful evil thing that we're doing here, right? It seemed there was a certain amount of cynicism there. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think um, it, it kind of goes back to the idea that, that a lot of people we spoke to don't really have much faith in the government to provide those services, um, which goes back to her character, Immaculate, why she, you know, went to an orphanage, even though she had parents, um, and why our, you know, the woman, Barbara, who donated to the orphanage we witnessed get raided or have the interaction with in Boise tell us that she's not going to stop donating money, even though the orphanage is unregistered, because she doesn't believe that the Ugandan government is going to help these children. Um, I think there's a pervasive sense that the government isn't going to help. So we're just going to do this on our own, whether it's, you know, right or wrong. So, and I do think that's important, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, Hint. I do think that's important to pick up on in terms of what Julia was saying, Barbara, who was saying that I'm still gonna fund them anyway. And there is this attitude that you'll see people still, you know, travel and visit these orphanages so that they can take pictures and so that they can help even though they don't necessarily or they almost certainly don't have the qualifications to deal with children that have been in vulnerable or traumatic situations they might not have the you know legitimate teaching skills or um you know the, the skills to be able to interact with with children in these environments and that still goes on and you know despite the research that we've done, for example, there are people who will watch it and they will still go and do that. And I think that was the other side to it. The fact that um, on one hand, there's exploitation that's taking place in Uganda, but on the other hand, there is a feeling that some people who were going and traveling and working in these orphanages were also exploiting these young children and that that was an important aspect to, to highlight as well. 